Hello, and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. In today's lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how easy it is to create custom headers and footers so that the important information that you want on your printout, such as page numbers, file names, company logos, print correctly the first time as well as every time. All right, let's take a look at our sales report. We have 12 months over here and it's our goal to have all 12 months appear on the same sheet. We have set this up so that the orientation is in landscape. There's more width. Let's go in to print preview. In Excel 2007, go to the office button down here to print and print preview. In all versions of Excel, as a matter of fact, in all Office programs, this keyboard shortcut, Control F2, Control Function 2, will take you in to print preview. Well, over here, we see that despite the fact that we're in landscape, which gives us more width, we only have nine of the 12 months appearing. And when we come over here onto the next page, here's our second disaster waiting to happen. The titles that we had on page one failed to repeat on page two. Now, both of these are very easy to fix and especially easy in Excel 2007, Excel 2010. Beginning with Excel 2007, if you go to the View tab of the ribbon, over here in workbook views. You see that in addition to normal view and page break preview, we have a new working view called page layout view. If you've ever worked with Excel on the Macintosh, this view is familiar. This is a working view. Notice that we have three placeholder areas in the header. We also have three placeholder areas down here in the footer where we can place important information, page number, date, time, file number, company logo, etc., etc. We also can see how the pages will break. And as I mentioned, this is an active working view. I frequently create my worksheets in page layout view. I don't take a performance hit. So our first challenge is how do we get these three orphan columns to appear on the same page. Now what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're in page layout view, but the commands to make the change are on the page layout tab of the ribbon. Now I admit I got confused with this when I was first learning Excel 2007. So be in page layout view, but then go over to the page layout tab on the ribbon. Now make sure that you're down here in the actual body and not up here in the uh, header section. What we want to do, page layout tab of the ribbon, come over here into the scale to fit group, and what we want to do is change the width, not have it be automatically set up by Excel, but rather change it to one page wide. Now obviously if there were 15 columns that I wanted to bring over, that the, the result would not be satisfactory. But here you see it's a nice scaling, so it automatically went down to 81% when we forced it to be one page wide. Remember the challenge that we had with the repeating titles for our rows? We can also fix that quickly. So once again, come over here onto the Page Layout tab of the ribbon. And you don't have to, of course, be in uh, Page Layout view, but I do find that it's very helpful. So now I come over to the Page Layout tab of the ribbon and come over here into the Page Setup. And for the print titles, what I want for the rows to repeat at the top, I can just click to row one. So dollar sign one for row one colon dollar sign one will mean that the titles that are in row one will repeat for all the successive pages, which we see that they do. Now, let me show you how we can add in custom headers and custom footers. I like to take advantage of the header rather than inserting extraneous rows up here. So I want to make sure that I am in page layout view, which began in Excel 2007 and continues in Excel 2010. So for example, what I might want to put over here in the header is I might want to put in the current date. Now notice up here, watch what happens. When I click away from those three placeholders, that tab on the ribbon disappeared. Come over here and now we have a new contextual tab on the ribbon. Header and footer tools for design. 
Now notice that there are desktop publishing elements. So for example, I can have a header and a footer which is different for the first page than for the rest of my report. I can also set this up so that I can have left-facing and right-facing uh, page headers. Now what I want to do over here, I'm in the header section in the right area, and what I want to add in there is I want to add in there the current date click OK and I have the formatting symbols when I click away there it is if I wanted to see it in a different format well then I could of course come through here and I could put in there and if I wish I could go back and make it bold etc etc so however you choose to do it whether you choose to have one of the placeholders put in there or type it's your choice how to do it now what I want to do is I want to come down here into the footer so I'm going to come down here into the footer and I also want to have a different first page so in the middle down here what I like to have on my first page is I like to have copyright information so for the first page I'll put in there and I could choose to make that bold. So I'll select it and I use the keyboard shortcut control B to make it bold. So notice this is my first page footer. What I want to be able to do on my second and subsequent page footers is I want to have down here the page numbers. So now in my general footer area and once again I want to make sure that I have the design tab on the ribbon activated. I have two choices. I could type in the word page and then use the symbol for the page number, have a space, and or I could choose to have one of these pre-built selections. So I want to have page one of however many pages that I have over there. Now I want to show you how we can add in a company logo. So I want to come back here and go back up here to the header and over in this section I want to have a logo so a logo is going to be a picture so I'm going to select the picture the picture that I want to have here's my logo now I'm going to warn you ahead of time it's going to be too big for this placeholder I'm going to show you how to fix it so we have the indicators for the picture and as I told you it's much too wide or much too big for this placement easy to fix once again header and footer tools design format the picture what I want to do is make sure that I have this box checked, lock the aspect ratio, and let me experiment, maybe 18% rather than 100%, and I want to make sure that that will change both for the height and the width, click OK, and you see it when you click away. Looks pretty good, I could go back and I could fine tune it, let's make it 21%. So it's really easy to have this set up and 21% okay and now over here what I might want to do is put in a title I could either type in the title that I want or I could come over here and use one of these commands so for example I could choose to have either the file name the file path or the worksheet tab name so this is the worksheet tab name so I'm going to put that in there and then perhaps down here what I might want to do is come down here and put in the actual uh, information for the file so in this case I'll put in the file name so click away there's the file name uh, move up to the top and again we'll see this in our um, in our setup over here on the second page there's my logo and there is my time and there is the worksheet tab so it's really very very easy to to work with now that it's set up you could remain in page layout view or go over here into another view so now I'm going to move over here to normal view and let me just show you how this works. Here is a worksheet that I have. I'm in normal view. I have set up custom headers, custom footers. So there's my logo. There is the name of the workbook. I put in there my uh, website. If I move down here into the footer, and again, make sure that you're in page layout view. Click into one of these areas. Come over here on to the uh, contextual tab. Come down here into the footer there's my copyright information and there is my indicator for the number of pages one other element just before I leave I'll come back here view tab of the ribbon 
page layout. Now that I have everything set up the way that I want, if I actually make a copy of this worksheet, so watch if I go control, grab it, and drag it to make a copy, then the settings that I have, the custom headers, the custom footers, uh, will pick up. So frequently what I will do is I'll go into group mode. So I'll make sure that I make a selection of multiple sheets when I go in and set up my headers and my footers. And this is a tip that I cover on my DVD, the 50 best tips for Excel 2007, and I'll see you in the next lesson.